Did you have it? Okay. Okay, we'll take a look at it. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, but right next, yeah. You hear there's Ubuntu and there's pumps with the pumps with the sound. Oh, we know about oh, those. Yeah, if they're mini related, then we have more troubles with the Ubuntu thing, of course. But we can talk about that later. We should be able to get some sound playback, especially with Ubuntu. Depends on the browser. So did you try Chromium? Yeah. So, but we're certainly trying. The future version will try to do a better job of that. But it's hard supporting all these different things. But it's certainly something that we are looking at. Uh, yeah, go ahead. It's back. Yeah. Probably because you were so creative, you were waving your hand to attract attention and it work. <laughs> I think other people also have about how to get type of sound editor or something else we've heard. They're doing more with sounds, I think, is a good thing to be thinking about. Yep. I have students that would like the ability to pause the timer or to be able to stop and restart the timer without having to do reusing variables. Wouldn't we all like to pause time sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's true. If, it's, if this happens, yeah. So, uh, although there's some challenge with that about you can reset it, and I think there's, there's some ways which it's clear if it's just always going. I think we thought about that time. We were worried there could be some confusion, but it, but we'll think about it again. I think what we thought about before, we worried about some confusion. So maybe we could talk to you later about it. Uh, so uh, how about there? Well, actually, no, there haven't been any decisions made on things like that yet, so, uh, so don't necessarily believe the rumors. Uh, but, but the idea of being able to have sort of local communication, not John, do you want to say anything on that? I think this is sort of related to the question or the, the suggestion about supporting multiplayer games. Yeah. Mesh networking is great for that. Is that what you kind of had in mind? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're definitely considering that. We did some experiments at what, the Scratch Day last year that was interesting, but it was, you know, we haven't quite settled on exactly how to do it the best way. Okay, we'll look at Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I have two things. One, real quick, uh, I'll just a block I'd love to see is a stop sprite instead of a stop script or stop all. Uh, that's a problem sometimes that students run into. Um, but uh, also, I was wondering, is there any way we could, you could make um, one of to communicate with uh, websites as far as, like, I was trying to do a thing with population count, count it would have been nice to be able to have the, <coughs> the script be able to communicate to the website to find out what exactly the day and time was right now. Or maybe have a scrap program to communicate with Twitter or something like that. Yeah. That's what we're definitely thinking about. In fact, in the video, one of the things that Andre has mentioned in the video was this sort of interacting with other social media and that sort of connects with that. So we're thinking about that, exactly how to go about it or exactly what uh, you know functionality we'll have, we're not sure yet. Uh, but it's definitely something that's a lot of interest, both in communicating with other websites, but also just grabbing data from you know different you know, data sources, I think that we certainly are interested in. Handling more data better is another thing we're thinking about a lot with Scratch 2.0, just different ways of dealing with data of uh, being able to pull in from different data sources are all things we're thinking about. Andres, I know you've been thinking about some of the interacting with other... I have a question for you. What kind of websites do you think you're going to be interested in using? You mentioned Twitter and like that's becoming... Like that's just something I threw out there. You know, maybe setting up something like Twitter or get information from Twitter, like maybe like how many Twitters are talking about this right now and, and get those or whatever. But just so people used to play with things. <laughs> Um, also, maybe that way, if you communicate with websites, you could make a high score table where somebody, where every time somebody gets a high score, it sends it to something and they can keep a list of high yeah. scores. We've been talking about that a lot. Yeah. So we've had lots of discussions. So I think we definitely will be able to support certain things like that. There have been lots of it. 
Yeah, so, and so we definitely want to be able to do things like that. So we, uh, if you go to the questions bar, John might do an experimental version of that. Yeah, so I think those are. Uh, That's actually fairly high on the list for stretching. <laughs> In the back. If I'm understanding that right, the test, it's, I wasn't sure I was fully on but it's similar to making a procedure, like having a script that you give a name and then can call it. Because yeah. I do think that's something which we're very interested in having a scratch to pronounce. We've been investigating different ways of doing that. So if that's something I think we'll definitely have some version of that in scratch to pronounce. But thank you. He's also, I think, asking about being able to put procedures maybe in a list and choose them randomly, which oh, is okay. something you can do. In uh, a, a variant of Scratch will build your own block. Or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we're definitely looking at you know some things like that. Right there. Do you think you think it would be good if you could just mail a project to someone? Yeah, yeah maybe. Although in some ways, a lot of things are going in the direction of just being able to give a pointer to a place where you can then look at it. Uh, but but that's something you know, we'll certainly give some thought. So we want to be more. I do think Scratch to Printer will be more integrated into online. We could just point to projects online. We also want to make sure that for people who aren't connected. We'll still be have a way of you know working on scratch projects and sharing scratch projects. So, uh, oh, back there. Well, I do think, yes, but we definitely want to find better ways of getting ideas. We did just talk this past week about better ways of organizing ideas and suggestions we get from the community. We didn't talk about that in particular, but that's an interesting idea. So we'll continue to think about how we can best get ideas from the community. That's one of the aims I know has been looking at. So. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. 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 No, that's something we've been talking a lot about that. Because I think that's something that Scratch is not very good at right now. It makes it pretty awkward when you want to make multiple levels in the game, or similarly, multiple scenes in the story. When you have a story and you go from one scene to another. And as you said, you have to hide all the sprites and show other sprites. It's not so easy. Scratch doesn't make it easy. So we've been thinking about that a lot. And the Scratch 2.0, I think that's something that's better. Uh, so we have some ideas. Hopefully, we'll have something that that, that, that works well. That, that's a great suggestion. Um, of levels and scenes. It, probably, it might not just be one block, but different ways of doing it. So how about there. <laughs> 